Hi there, Clocking the Gallup fans. We've come to the end of another week. We've come to a Friday. It is uh, therefore chat to Nina Podesta on a Thursday night to head of Friday, the 15th of July, racing with a nine race program at Fairview. And we're racing on the turf as opposed to the poly track last week. I was there. I was lucky enough to spend a night with uh, Neil Pretorius and his son, Devon. And my thanks to them. And we're coming to you this week back in Joburg, but Nino is down in Cape Town. Nino, nine races on the card, but going expects to be good. They've had a bit of rain. They've had nine millimeters of rain down Quebec away, but it is expected to be a lovely day down there with 19 degrees centigrade. A very good evening. Good evening. And good evening to you, Nico. And uh, yeah, nine races on, on, on the turf tomorrow and uh, work riders uh, to start off with. Yeah, that's why they're nine races, because this is an additional race. It's a work riders maiden over 1,000 meters. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, I saw, I was looking through the program for KwaZulu Natal um, in the last couple of days, and um, I saw that there was a work riders race planned for Natal. Now, and they tell a bit behind the eight ball when it comes to work riders races, because uh, as you know, Joburg is well advanced. We have one every, every second week or, you know, regularly. But I see there that I don't know if they've got a work riders program, but I think if you're registered as a groom with a stable, then you get a chance to ride in the work riders, as opposed to here where they have to go through the work riders school at James Marie. So it's very different down there. I think it's basically fast tracking groomers races in Natal. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know the setup, Nico. Could be. You could be right. Yeah. I know that uh, the work riders in PE can only uh, ride up the straight. Uh, I, I believe. Yes, I think that is the case because they have one every so often down there. Not enough. Not enough, but they put, put them on every now and then. So, so what do you know about them? Do you know who, who the guys are to follow? Have you got some sort of idea on who we're going to back in the first race? Nico, I've got absolutely no idea. I was hoping you get Max on, on the line for her. I think uh, you MX, know yeah. them better no, than Well, me. well maybe think... if you tune in tomorrow. So we've got that on tomorrow morning. Maybe um, he will shed some light on that. Maybe he's chatted to... Uh, one or two in the know, as he, as you know, he lives down there. But Zed Mutwa yeah. is one of the one of the informed riders, and apparently Mr. Fuchani, who was riding number four back to Formentera, is not riding. Um, he's medically indisposed, so therefore Zed Mutwa gets the ride on uh, on that one. So um, that must have a chance uh, back to Formentera. Do you give it a chance? I do give. Uh, I haven't uh, tipped it in my first four, but. Uh... You know, these work riders, uh, any kind of result is possible. What I can tell you is that I think this guy that rides number five, uh, Miss United States, I think he's had a winner in the loss. Uh, he, he's won one, he's won the work riders. I don't know if it was the last one or the one before that. Right. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, in okay, I'll 14. tell you what it is. Yeah, so his name is, uh, it's number five you're talking about, eh? Yeah. In Corsi Corner, Poche. In Corsi Corner, Poche. Poche, yeah. Now, I believe he's had a winner in one of the work riders in PE. So that's the one that you're siding with. Oh, no, you're siding with the 11 to beat it. I'm going with 11, but I, I keep, uh, but I do make Miss United State a, a runner tomorrow at a big price. Yeah. He's won two races, actually. He won a ball right, won two. Livingston for Jacques Stradham, and he won aboard African Royal Jewel for Jean Nell. Correct. So he's had two winners uh, in Corsi Corner Poitier. He's had two winners. Yeah. But I think that's uh, that's what you've got to keep an eye on tomorrow. Uh, and have a look at the betting, uh, 14 to 1, uh, with a, uh, an accomplished uh, uh, work rider on. I think it's a um, nice value here. And I do believe that she's, she's, she's going to be better over the thousand. Yeah. He rode it before. He rode it into eighth position back in March behind Princess Debs. If you look yeah, back in the four months. So he did, he did ride it. He has ridden it before. 
Um, and I think that was over the same course and distance that, that we see him running over. But do you like that as a bit of an outsider? As you say, it's 14 to 1. But the horse you've tipped to win, Emily Spirit, is the hot favourite to win. Emily Spirit, uh, two-year-old, um, with the, the work rider Guadiso aboard it. Um, and that is the hot pot uh, favourite, 11 to 10. It's Asi Tandile Guadiso. Yeah, I've never heard of him. I don't know if he's had uh, um, any rides in the, in he, the other couple of... Funny enough, riders. he won on Princess Debs. Oh, was uh, he the one that rode Princess Debs? He rode Princess Debs for Duncan McKenzie, but he is riding for Alan Kreef, and uh, he's had a couple of places, but he has only had, I think, six rides, I'm looking at, six rides for a win. So um, that is all the rage in the market. Yeah, and, uh, and on form, she's got to be the horse to beat, Nico. Uh, look, uh, she seems to like uh, the number two box, but uh, surely tomorrow she's gonna, she's gonna probably uh, should uh, beat the seal. She's well drawn and she gets a three kilo being a two year old, well drawn at 10. And uh, this guy, Kodiza, like you said, has, has had a winner already, so he's, uh, he knows what it's all about. She's definitely the horse to beat on form. And the run behind the Rainbow Sea has been frank. Uh, Rainbow Thief came out to run third behind the uh, Korea about a week or two ago. Right. Yeah. But, okay, so so the best advice is to to follow the uh, the work riders in form, and I'm sure that both between Neil and Nadine, they'll give us some idea of um, who those guys are as the form guys. But let's go on to race two in the interim, um, and in the second race, you can scratch number eight, Mia. Kalis is out of race two. And Sandile Carty rides number nine, Morning Breeze. Just to let you know that Robert Carty is not riding at the meeting. Uh, the all too often excuse, as we've mentioned on the show before, of flight complications. I'll tell you what now, Nino, sitting here independently of knowing what's going on, the, between the jockeys of South Africa, there are more flight complications between them alone than the rest of the whole country put together. Oh, the flight Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, probably. I, I don't know where Robert caught he, if he's in Durban or in Cape Town. He's, uh, I know he rides in Durban a lot as well. So uh, I, don't, I don't understand what uh, these flight complications can be. Uh, I think it's, it's, anyway. I don't know. I think it's, to be honest, I think it's an excuse for a lot of them. I think if you delve down deep, a lot of them aren't flight complications, but uh, maybe we'll get uh, Arnold Hyde to come on and explain it to us how, how it works. Because as I say, nobody in the whole country experiences more flight complications than the jockeys in, in South Africa. But, but it also puts the trainer under pressure. I mean, why do they accept the ride if they know that uh, they might not be able to get let, there. Let, let us find out what the reason is, but it's it's not acceptable. Okay, let's move on to what you like for the second race. You're going for Echoes of Winter, number five, yeah. to beat number 13, Too Far. I like three horses in this race. I like Echo of Winter, I like Lady Hawk and Too Far. Now, Echoes of Winter, I can't see why he's uh, four to one or he's, or he's longer in the betting than uh, Lady Hawk. Echoes of Winter has beaten Lady Hawk on four occasions. Behind yeah. Share for Me, behind Rosa Dorada, behind Open Secret, and behind Vanadium. So uh, there's no reason why she can't beat it again. So uh, I, I think that at, at four to one, I think it's a bit of value. Uh, two fun ran behind Echoes of Winter, uh, on the run behind Rosa Rosada, that was over 40, but then ran in front of uh, Echoes of Winter behind the uh, Vanadium. Mm. So uh, they've been swapping around. But those are my first two choices. And obviously, I give uh, uh, Lady Hawk a bit of a chance. But uh, I think the betting is wrong. I think uh, Echoes of Winter should be shorter in the betting than Lady Hawk. But you know, they back uh, when you see Greg Sheen and Alan Freer. Uh, the money always comes for that combination. Mm. But you're quite right in the, in the sense of uh, putting Tufan in the mix there because that Gavin Smith stable is very, very hot, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it is. Uh, they, they, week in, week out, 
have many winners on a card and uh, they are just in very, very good form. Yeah, they are. They can't do anything wrong at the moment. It's just to get them right, Nico, that's the problem because Gavin always puts three, four horses in and, uh, you know, you don't quite know which one, uh, which one is, is the right one. Yeah. But I think, yeah, in this race, he's got four of them, but you'd, you'd expect that Warren Kennedy would be on the right one who's had the most form too far. Okay, but you're going five there, Echoes of Winter to beat 13, seven, and, and two. I like the two to improve, eh? The, the Willow Magic. I think that can make the, the trifectas and contest space. Yeah. I, I think that's an improver, that uh, Blonde Magic. Blonde Magic, yeah. Ex Fissa runner now with Tara Lang, Tara and uh, Lang and, and Gavin Fent. I had a nice chat actually to Tara Lang uh, when I was there last week. Uh, wonderful woman, been through some tough times, Tara. Um, she had those hordes of horses uh, from, from a prominent owner in the country that uh, exited the game and now was left with basically nothing and had to rebuild her stable. And she suffered uh, immensely, but she is rebuilding it. And I was going through her story. It was it was quite um, quite heart wrenching actually to hear it from her. But all credit to her for for having the will to continue. Okay, let's move and on to race and, seven. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I I wish her the best. Uh, she's a top trainer, and I'm sure it's not going to take her long to get back to to the top of uh, of a game and uh, uh, bringing in winners as, as she used to do before. I agree with that. I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with you. There. I said race seven. I meant race three because the horse that's staring at me is number seven uh, because Andre Nell is going to Fairview. Uh, when you see this, alarm bells start ringing, don't they? And he's put Elder de Mayer on one, two, three, four, five, six horses. Surely that's the stable to follow. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And, um, you know, he's not taking any chances. He's taking Aldo up. Uh, I don't know where, where Grant is. Probably couldn't get Grant to go. So uh, he maybe, the next best. Maybe it, Grant had flight complications. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Probably uh, whatever it is. Um, well, he, he's, uh, he's found uh, a, a capable replacement in Aldo Domeo, one of my favorite jockeys. Mm. Yeah, in the Cape, as I said before, uh, Aldo, Richard, and Grant, those are my jockeys, and uh, you got to respect the stable tomorrow, Nico, and every runner that he sends out tomorrow has to be closely looked at and given the utmost uh, respect. I see, Nina, That's that this, this horse ran in a work rider's first time out, which was the case today with Pierre Stradham's winner, who, who had his first run in a work rider's, that horse that won today. Um, the gliding fish. Yes, correct. So the gliding fish. So this could be lightning striking twice with horses that have appeared in a work riders first up and won the next time out. Yeah, but Nico, you know, I was going to mention that a lot of people tend to dismiss horses that run in work riders. Mm. You got to, uh, you know, you got to look into it more closely. Uh, she ran in a work rider, but she ran behind pure Maverick. Now, pure Maverick was uh, thought good enough by Justin took him to Durban and it ran not far behind the uh, movers and shakers uh, on July day. Yes. You know, uh, I think it was the second race. I think that's six lengths. Yeah, I think that's one of Greg Bortz's horses, actually. Pure Maverick. Greg Bortz is right. not there in it, yeah. And also Pure Maverick ran in that minor feature in Cape Town that was won by Clifftop. And it ran just behind Cousin Casey. Cousin mm -hmm. Casey has come out to frank that form. So I think this is very strong form here that Rafiki brings into this race. And I make it the horse to beat. And I, I'll be very, very disappointed if he doesn't win tomorrow. Okay. So that's one of your bankers of the day, by the sound yeah, of it. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, a very strong choice. Uh, you know, I think she'll be short. I, I, did, I had to find... I think I'm team you know, 12 to 10. 12 to 10, uh, Rafiki. So I, sh I could have tipped that as a best bet. I thought she'd be in the red. No, you could have. Uh, well, uh, you're on the cusp. Remember, the rule is nothing under 12 to 10. You might be able to get away with if everyone agrees. But normally we like about 15 to 10 plus, you know, because if horses are odds on, 
um, it, it'll make life easy for you. That means you won't get paid by us, Nina, if you tip odds. Uh, okay. Yes. But we can't pay people. Surely no one can pay people to tip odds on shots every day. No, no. Would, would we, well, would, be it as it, it may, I think it, was it wouldn't warrant a paycheck, Nina, for you. No, it, it wouldn't. But uh, yeah, no, definitely not. But it's better to have a 12 to 10 winner than a 20 to 1 loser, you know? Now yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's his, yeah. Okay. But, but uh, I'll make this one of the uh, better bets on the court, Nico. I, I, I really do, and I, I think she's going to take a lot of beating. The, the dangers, probably number five. Uh, Horsey uh, ran a good race uh, first time out. Also, ex Justin Horse. Uh, Tammy. Number two, ran behind uh, Horsey last time, behind uh, Berenberg. And then uh, number 13, uh, the Tardis Magic. I believe that needs a bit number more 12. down. I'm not sure. Number 12. Number 12, yeah. Sorry, number 12, uh, mm. the Tardis Magic. This is uh, the half-brother to Jager Moon, by the way. And I think she might just need a bit more ground. I don't know if she's going to be effective over the 1,200. I, uh, I know the owner of the horse. And he fancied it. He fancied it last time. He took me a bet that she would win. I won the bet because uh, she ran uh, uh, third behind Kuznikov. And I actually took the horse that ran second to beat Diesel. Mm. So he owes me a coffee. Okay, well, then you can get it from Lyle Cooper because Lyle Cooper's got about 30 coffees that he's expecting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So there we go. Okay, Nina, let's move on to race four. I want to go on to that maiden plate, start of the pick six over 1,600 metres in race four. Um, no jockey changes, just a compression mask on number one, McTavish here. Yeah? And just going to the selection, you're tipping Winter's Joy, who's again mm. on Drenel and Elder Domea. So you're going for them and, again here. And another strong choice, Nico. Uh, I think on breathing, she's about twice over out of a Western winter me. I think she's gonna love this trip up in trip. Uh, last time out, something went wrong. She wasn't striding out. She was uh, examined after the race. Uh, probably, the, the, I don't think anything was wrong, but um, uh, she brings very strong form. This is a very weak maiden, and I think she's gonna improve leaps and bounds going over the, the 1600 meters. And another strong selection. And I think the only danger to her is a global beat, number eight. Mm. Okay, so nine from eight. And so Nino's tipping number five, Broadway, to run into third. And McTavish, number one, to run fourth, is expecting improvement as well from that one. Okay, race five is another maiden, the start of the first jackpot. It's 2,000 meters. Let's have a look at the changes in race number five. Uh, by the way, in race three, I forgot to tell you, number 11 was out there this time round for Montana okay. Turner, who I had the pleasure of meeting last week for the very first time ever. Montana Turner. Uh, she in came race out. three? Yes, race three, number 11 is scratched. And okay, this time around. I met Montana Turner for the first time. She was kind enough to bring my walkie-talkie from the stipendary stewards up to me in the box. And... Um, very pleasant uh, young lady. So nice to meet you, Montana. Oh, okay. she's, she's she's a character. I watch her on the on the shows on the, on yeah, the interviewer. Yeah. She's yeah, I absolutely love her. She's yeah, down to earth and absolutely. She was. I had a few words to say to her, and uh, it was nice to meet her. But it's amazing. I, I'd never met her before, but but we met by chance. Okay, race five is a maiden over 2,000 metres. Uh, let's tell you what's going on here. Number, in fact, no changes by the looks of things. Yeah, that's races right. clear. Let's go to your selection. You're tipping number one. Let's just have a quick look at it. It's a Glenn Cotson's horse, Global Forests. Yeah, Nico, I, I find this a bit of a trappy card. I, I, I'm not sure Global uh, Forest uh, has had 11 runs, but, I, you know, Glenn Cotson is one of the most uh, successful trainers when raiding in PE. You've got to respect everything that he takes to PE. Uh, on the run behind the Isle of the Winds, when she ran second to it, over 1900 at Kenworth, I think she's going to be hard to beat if she brings that form uh, to PE tomorrow. And also two um, 
two lengths behind light speed, who came out to win uh, again in uh, Kenilworth. I think she won uh, a minor feature, if I'm not mistaken. Can you just pick that up? Light speed. Uh, light speed. Uh, Justin, uh, uh, Justin Train. Yeah, I'll check that. Yeah. So two lengths behind light speed. I think it's uh, it's good form. It's, it's a very moderate field. I, I can tell you that I don't like Joe Harmon. So I don't like Joe Harmon. Yeah, light speed uh, won. Light speed won a won the Grade Three uh, Langerman. Could it? Grade Three Langerman, the two year old Langerman over fifteen hundred meters. Yeah, that's right. Right, and she only ran two lengths behind light speed, which uh, is is way above uh, the author or uh, the competition or, or the rivals uh, that she's meeting tomorrow. Mm. Uh, I, I don't like Joe Harmon. Who's the dangers uh, to Global Forest? Maybe Wildest Dreams, uh, Star Rider, and, and Sugar Snap. But, but I think Global Forest will, will go close to winning here, Nico. But I, I, I don't think I've banked it in the P, in my bike, but I've covered it. Okay, so you're going there for numbers one, nine, five, and seven. I'm just going to add one horse in that keeps staring at me. Number two. No, this horse was in Joburg before. Number eight. Eight. Okay. Japan approval. Because she's run over the wrong distances in her last two starts. She ran over a sprinting 1,200 and a 1,400 when she was going a trip um, when she was with Candace Dawson. I think that this is a roughie to include number eight Japan approval because I think... But if you look at my bipod, you will see that I've got it in, Nico. Ah, uh, well done. And you're thinking... And also with just 52 and a half kilos um, on its back, I would throw that in for good measure. Anyway, you've done that. Because you, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, as they say. And I've also, I don't know, can you give us any input on number 10, uh, Mansaruya, this well-bred uh, Silvana horse? Do you think she can improve on, on the turf tomorrow? She's, uh, she's only yeah, had one run on the podium. Interesting enough, you ask that, but look how far she ran behind Japan approval in the race to Pretty and Pearls. Uh, 14 okay. lengths behind. So I'd rather be backing. Oh, by the way, my cat has come to say hello. Um, so I don't know whether that's good news. It's not a black cat, though. Oh. So I think I okay. think you should make a quick appearance over here. Uh, there he is. But, there okay. he is. There's my cat. Nico. Yeah. Just yeah. to bring you back. She ran behind pretty uh, behind uh, Japan approval to pretty in pulls. Yeah. But then look at the run to Lamborghini. Yes, with the blinkers on. She ran, she ran four lengths in front of uh, Japan approval. Yes. That's why I put them both in my bike. Okay, I think that's good thinking because I think they're both ex Joburg horses and they would have run against Stronger in Joburg um, there. Okay, so that's race five. Let's move on to the sixth race, which is a classified stakes race over 1,600 metres. Um, let's take a look at the changes now in race number six. Um, Jockey change number one. Royal Shindig is ridden by Sandile Kati, who's Robert's brother. So he's picked up that ride. And then number fourteen, Yespero, has a compression mask on. Let's go to your selection here, Nina. You're going for number four, Policy Target, and this is your best bet. Yes, one of my best bets on the card. And uh, yeah, uh, Nico, uh, this is a difficult race to find who's going to run second, third, and fourth. But but I, I, uh, a policy target for me, one of the best bets on the card, cannot see it getting beaten tomorrow on the runs behind, over to you and Miller, you in Cape Town, third to Blizzard, she beat Inkley over the 2000 at Kenilworth. She's going to be spot on for this race tomorrow, 1600, perfect, Alder de Mayo up, drawn seven. Uh, I, to me, the, one of the best bets on the card. Okay, you're tipping that to beat. Uh, I thought Vida Fatura had a chance. I see you've tipped that for third. I think it's, yes. it might well be better on the turf than it was on the poly, but not not drawn too well. But you've tipped Wangan Midnight second. Yeah, I think Wangan Midnight at a big price. I think that could could run a forward race. I don't think it can beat uh, Policy Target. 
nor do I think whether Futura came from that 13 draw, but they could be there or thereabouts. Uh, like I said, uh, if you take policy target out of this race, it becomes wide open. So, uh, you know, I'm just looking at the winner here. I might be wrong with the placings, but I think I'm right with the winner. Okay, let's move on to the feature of the day. It's the furthest race run down in Kabeja. It's the 3,200 meter listed Port Elizabeth Gold Cup for 175,000 Rand. And in race seven, I'm looking here, compression masks on three, find me unafraid, and four, master supreme. Alamites go on the six, super handsome. Your selection is Glenn Cotson's Philly Flower of Saigon. Now, last time out, you didn't want to know. She won comfortably, and you're tipping her to follow up. The only difference now, Richard Farine not on. He's not going there tomorrow. Got Ryan Munger aboard, who's never ridden her before. Yeah, but I don't think Richard can ride 53 and all. But still, I also queried that. I, I would have taken the one kilo because Richard is there. But I don't think he can make that weight. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think... Uh, can but he... he rode it last time, no, uh, 54 and all. So... No, I don't think he can. Let's just have a look. And you know, see. 54. I, I'm not... Well, 54. Um, 54 could possibly carry plus one if he's riding 54. Yeah. Well, then I, I don't understand it because, you know, I'm not the trainer. I would have had Richard Foley because he knows the horse and carried the extra half or, or, or extra one Extra one. Well, I, I see he's riding 54 and a half here for Cliffy Miller in race eight. Sorry, my apologies. He rides 54 and a half for, for a number 13 great guy. Um, yeah, well, he rode the uh, Flower of Saigon uh, on 54 and a half last time out. Yeah. yeah, but it's an additional one and a half kilos over two miles, Nina. It, it might... Well, she's carrying 53 and all, so it would have been an extra one kilo. 53. Is she on 53? Yeah, 53, yeah. Uh, this is 53 and all. Oh, 53, yeah. Well, then I can understand that one and a half kilos would have made a bit of a difference. I don't think Glenn Cotton really worried about that because this will win and it will win uh, by street. Yeah. If, you know, if, if we had done the show on, on Wednesday, uh, I would have, this was my best bet on the card. It was a five star bet uh, at 16 to 10. This morning I saw nine to 10, so I had to change the best bet. This yeah. would have been my best bet on the card. Yeah, it has shortened from, and I see from 16 to 10 into 9 to 10. Now, there's odds on now, 9 to 10, Flower of Sight. And, you know, we, we've already lost the price. Luckily, I've told a few of my friends to, 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 to have a go on it a couple of days ago. Hopefully, they got the 16 to 10. Mm -hmm. uh, but, Nico, the only danger is the uh, answer Lazio. I think it's an absolute boat race. I don't know. Uh, Antelazio hasn't run since uh, Met Day, but he ran four lengths behind Sparkling Water, who came giving out it, to win the July, and giving he was given a four kilo. Giving it four kilos, yeah. So if that race had been run on uh, on level weight, they would have probably just about dead hit it. Oh. Well, that is strong form line. The, the only problem, I, I don't know if he's racing fit, but it is under now. And it's got to be taken very seriously. Mm. I think he's the only danger to, to Flower of Saigon. But uh, to me, uh, Flower of Saigon uh, would have been my best bet on the card. I cannot see her losing. But if she does, uh, I think only uh, Enter Lazio can beat her. Okay, Nina, we've got to kick on. We've only got seven minutes of show left. Race eight is five to four. It's a merit rate at 68 handicap over 1,200 meters. In race eight, scratch number one, Dan Terras is out. Number 12, Jet Captain, the Mount of Sandile Kati. And Yuse Ramzan rides number 19, Tevye. Uh, the other change, cheek pieces off number six, Travel Master. Uh, compression mask on number five, a king's return, no blinkers and no tongue tie for 12 jet captain. So quite a few changes there. Your selection is number six, travel master to beat number three, old mug. Yeah, I'll make it a two horse race, Nico. And um, if this was a thousand meters, I would have labeled tra travel master. Uh, I think she'll get away with a 12. 
the only reason why I, I've tipped that to be uh, number three old mug is because we know the uh, the report that uh, um, CFA has uh, with the uh, horses that were previously trained by Brett Crawford. Yeah, that's I mean, there's right, a, yeah. a list as long as you're on first time PE trained ex Brett Crawford and they win first time out. And so the tongue tie on. The tongue tie on. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would have preferred it over the thousand. She, I, I know she's better over the thousand, but she might just get away with it over the 12. Uh, and obviously, old mug, old mug, old mug, however you pronounce that, mm. old. I think that's the, the danger. And then the only other possible horse that could uh, 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 challenge for the winner is the um, number 14, Raise the Red Lantern. Mm. So for me, three horses maximum in, in, all, in all exotics. Okay, 6 3 14 there. Followed by four in fourth ticket to ride. The last race runs at Popost four, a merit rated 60 at handicap over 1200 meters. Your changes in the ninth race, no scratchings to report in the ninth race, just to, in fact, there are no changes to report at all. So I'm not going to go through those changes because they're immaterial. This is your value bet for the day. It's horse number 18, who we've been for each time and it's run in the last few weeks. Conquer the world again carrying just 50 and a half kilos. You've tipped that to win and you've tipped it as your value bet of the day. And it is, believe it or not, again at 14 to one. Yeah, I just had to find a value bet and I came up with this one again. I, I just think that uh, penultimate run over course and distance was impressive, uh, carrying the same weight. She's back uh, to 50 and a half. She's well drawn at 12. Last time out, they put her on the poly. She... she she got a bad draw. I think she was drawn 12 out of 15 and was way out of the ground. I think she's gonna uh, she's gonna run a much better race over the course and distance that she she won on, and mm -hmm. uh, that could be the nice value bet at 14 to one. Obviously, you got to respect number uh, Andre Nell's uh, number four, eh? Birdie and Bogey. Birdie and I don't Bogey. think the form is, is strong. A uh, one-time winner. He's got to give uh, conquer the world what. 10 kilos or nine yeah. and a half kilos. 10 kilos, eh? Uh, let me just work it out. 10, 10 kilos, you're right. 10 kilograms. Yeah, I, I know uh, I know she's a filly, uh, a conquer the world, but she's the only filly in the race. We saw sparkling water, yeah. the only filly in the race coming in the July. So yeah. not to say fillies can't win. I just, uh, Birdie and Bogey won a maiden, uh, a work riders maiden in Cape Town. The form after that hasn't been quite Although Tchaikovsky did come and win three in a row, so that the form line has been franked a bit. I just don't think she's given a lot of weight to, to conquer the world, you know, and uh, wow. I think conquer the world could be a nice value bet. But uh, for exotics, uh, uh, Birdie and Bogey, Narcos, uh, a couple have to be included. Okay, we've got uh, three minutes of show left, so time to put up your bipod. It's inexpensive. He's spending 30 rand as Nina Podesta. It's the middle of the month, so you want to make some money on this. 30 rand, you're loading up the first and the fourth legs. If you don't mind, Nina, I'm going to rush it up a little bit because we'd only yeah. have two and a half minutes left. The first leg, which is race two, if I'm right in saying, You've gone for numbers two, Blonde Magic, five, Echoes of Winter, seven, Lady Hawk, eight, um, Mia Khalees, which is now scratched. Yeah, and but we leave it in. Too far. Leave it in for the for the double up on the favorite by Bankers and you could, Rafiki. You could even treble up, right? Eh? You could treble up the, yeah. the favorite. If it, you could treble up. By nine in the third leg, Winter's Joy. Then the loading up the fourth leg is one, Global Forests, five star rider, seven sugar snap, eight Japan approval, nine wildest dreams, and ten Mansaraya, banker four policy target, banker seven flower of Saigon. Just confirmation the best bet is race six, number four policy target at five to two, and the value bet is in the last race, race nine, number 18, conquer the world at 14 to one. Nina, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Uh, thanks so much for your time on this Thursday evening. We'll load this up. We'll have um, MX uh, in his Uber talking to us tomorrow. 
um, and we'll hone in on that work right as race, the first race, see what he's heard because he's the, our man on the ground. He hears these things and he'll come forward with some information. But great chatting to you. What have you got planned for the weekend? Um, nothing, Nico. Actually, I'm going to watch some TV. I hope there's some sport on. And uh, yeah, basically not much. Maybe having a braai on Sunday or Saturday. Okay, enjoy. A poiki. We're making a poiki. Oh, wonderful. Someone. Making yeah. a poiki, eh? Okay. Enjoy it. Um, have a, a glass of wine with that. Don't forget to relax and take it easy and think what could have been had Italy made the World Cup later this year, which they didn't qualify for in Qatar. Just think yeah, about Yeah, I don't think they deserve to qualify. Yeah. To be, uh, to be brutally honest with you. Anyway, we back them in the Euro Championships. That's what matters, the Azuri. Okay. Nino Podesta, thank you very much for your time. I've enjoyed chatting to you and we'll speak to you again next week. Thank you, Nico. And uh, let's hope uh, Max can come up with some, uh, some nice bits tomorrow for, the, for our viewers. Thanks very much. Hey. Take it easy.